Hey everyone, this is Andrew Hutchinson, the managing editor of hogbeat.com, your Arkansas site and the Rivals Network. I know you're probably still basking in the glow of Saturday's win over Texas, but uh, it's time to turn the page and uh, once again go behind enemy lines. This week, to get some inside perspective on Georgia Southern, uh, I reached out to Frank Solkowski, who covers the Eagles for WJCL 22 News in Savannah, Georgia. He also hosts the uh, Georgia Southern pregame show. Uh, he was kind enough to give us a few minutes to, to preview this weekend's game. Frank, uh, appreciate you doing this. How are you? I'm doing well. I appreciate you having me. And yeah, we're, I tell you what, uh, we're excited to, to come up to Fayetteville this weekend. And uh, congratulations on the success, nationally ranked. So yeah, Georgia Southern already has a, a couple nationally ranked uh, teams on the schedule this year. And the Hogs, uh, they're the first up. Yeah, I mean, I, I was going to get kind of your insight on, you know, through two games. I know, you know, Georgia Southern's one on one. They had a close win over Gardner Webb, an FCS team, and then they uh, lost this past weekend, 38 to 6 to, to Florida Atlantic. I know it's early, but what's kind of the vibe around the team right now? Well, uh, of course, the, the, the team's still upbeat. I mean, they, there's still everything to play for. You're, you're playing your, uh, let's be honest, your preseason games right now. Uh, you know, the, after Arkansas, they'll jump into the Sun Belt Conference, which is going to be a tall task in itself uh, with the likes of Louisiana and Arkansas State and Coastal Carolina and Appalachian State. Uh, you know, let's be honest, uh, the Sun Belt Conference, we like to believe that, that it is the top of the group of five, and it, and it really has become that way in recent years. Uh, Georgia Southern, new coming in, uh, there was going to be a a lot of questions to be answered early in the season, and there's and they're still looking for answers in a lot of areas. Uh, we knew going into the season that uh, the quarterback with the most experience on the roster was Justin Tomlin. Uh, he was going to be suspended for the first two games uh, due to academic issues from last year. Well, those two games are, are done, and he has been announced as the starting quarterback uh, against Arkansas this week. Uh, so in his place, it's been a couple different guys at quarterback. And at Georgia Southern, when you're uh, running a, a predominantly option offense or some variation of it, uh, we've seen it, you know, over the years go from a, a traditional flex bone and what you would see at Navy and Army into more of a spread option with a little bit more passing, a little bit more speed to it. Uh, you know, we've had several different coaching staffs, and, and that's one thing that we've kind of evolved to. Um, so the quarterback always plays a, a big role in that. And, and here in the early goings, uh, Georgia Southern has uh, turned to Amari Jones. And this is a guy who came to Georgia Southern as a running back wide receiver transfer from uh, Tulane, where he played for former Georgia Southern head coach Willie Fritz down there. Uh, he actually took snaps as quarterback in the game uh, season, season opener against Gardner Webb. And then you have uh, Cameron Ransom, a true freshman, big quarterback, out of Florida, who uh, started uh, the game against uh, FAU over the, this past weekend, suffered an injury in the second quarter, and it wasn't the same afterward. It looked like a high ankle sprain. So, uh, again, your quarterback position kind of makes it all work. So, here in the early goings, Georgia Southern still kind of feeling things out with that quarterback position, but they look to get a little bit more stability uh, now that uh, Justin Tomlin uh, will get the start here against Arkansas. Yeah, I was going to ask you about that quarterback situation. You know, with, with Justin, you know, him coming back, he has a handful of starts under his belt. Uh, and when you play an offense like what Georgia Southern does, I mean, how, how much differently does the offense function with him under center, you think, compared to, as you said, a true freshman and a, a converted running back? Well, I can tell you one thing, and anytime you have a guy who has experience with the type of offense, Georgia, it just with that Georgia Southern runs, it just runs a lot cleaner. You can see it; it moves a lot quicker. Uh, where you may have a quarterback taking the step, you know, hesitating a little bit on, on a pitch or a handoff or a keep, uh, a guy like Tomlin uh, brings that uh, fluidity to it. You know, he's been there. Uh, it's going to look a lot prettier and, and entail. It's going to be a little bit more deceiving at times. So. Uh, I know that's what uh, you know, head coach Chad Lunsford is hoping for this week, that it looks a little bit crisper, that it, that it rolls a little bit quicker. Uh, because, you know, when you're, you're trying to break in guys who aren't as used to making those pitches and those reads, uh, it, it gets a little blocky. It, you know, it, to me, it kind of looks like Minecraft, you know, where it's kind of blocky and, and, and it's not as smooth. And, and, and that's what you need uh, when this offense gets going and it's fluid and, and it's crisp. 
uh, it definitely does a lot better. So, uh, you know, that's been good. Uh, you know, what we're also hoping for is to get the, the running backs healthy. Uh, we don't know if we'll see them, but uh, Jordan Southern's leading rusher, J.D. King, who started his college career at Oklahoma State, who transferred to Georgia Southern, uh, he blew out his knee last year and has been rehabbed and came back into fall camp and then tweaked it and has some swelling. So he's actually been held out uh, the first two games. And more than likely, he's going to be held out against Arkansas to go ahead and give him that extra week of rest so he's ready uh, when Sunbelt Conference play. Again, not that this Arkansas game isn't huge, uh, but let's be honest, uh, winning the Sunbelt, competing for a Sunbelt title is, is what this team is, is most uh, concerned about. So you kind of want all your soldiers ready for battle in that aspect. So there have been some injuries here uh, early on for Georgia Southern uh, and in some key positions. And J.D. King was one. Uh, Logan Wright, his, uh, one of the other big running backs, uh, you know, was, was the go-to guy in the first uh, game of the season. Uh, he tweaked his ankle in that first game. So he was limited, only had about four to five touches against FAU. So uh, the good thing is the running back core for Georgia Southern is deep, and all those guys have been called upon. And I'd imagine we see a heap of help in the bat uh, as the Eagles soar up to Arkansas this week. Yeah, I was going to ask you about Logan Wright. I didn't realize that, that he was kind of banged up. I mean, who, who are some of the other offensive weapons that, that Arkansas fans should be aware of, you know, healthy or, or whether they're questionable or, or whatever? I tell you, uh, Caleb Hood, uh, one of the slot receivers, is, is one of those guys who uh, is a big play guy. And if Georgia Southern has time and, and can be able to get the ball into his hands, uh, he can uh, be a, a weapon at receiver. Uh, you know, last year, uh, he had a huge uh, game-tying catch, uh, or actually a catch to go ahead of Louisiana when they were nationally ranked. Uh, Georgia Southern would lose on a, a walk-off field goal to the Raging Cajuns. Uh, but he's a guy who can be dangerous. And at a tight end, uh, Bo Johnson is a guy who, uh, at tight end, who, who was injured last year. Uh, but the game before he went out with a knee injury, uh, he had a couple touchdowns and was going to emerge as, as a weapon. Uh, a lot of folks may remember his dad is the former uh, major league catcher, Charles Johnson, who played for the Marlins and everything else. So uh, he, he's got, uh, you know, that, that athletic pedigree and he is, uh, is, is, is starting to get back to his old self a little bit and, and looking to get the ball a little bit more. So, uh, you know, Amari Jones, we talked about him a minute ago about how he plays some quarterback. He is also very dangerous when he lines up in the backfield or in the slot as well. Uh, there's not much that he can't do. He was a high school quarterback when he was at, in Texas. And then he goes to Tulane and, and moves into a, a wide receiver. And we saw him last week against Florida Atlantic play running back. So uh, he's a guy who, who's very dangerous offensively for uh, Georgia Southern. Uh, got a young wide receiver. So these guys, uh, we're all still kind of waiting to see what they can do. Uh, I, I know that we have a, a lot of guys who, who are big and, and really fit the mold, including uh, J.J. McAfee, you're talking about a receiver who's at six foot four and he's around 225, who, who has all the, the looks of an FBS, you know, a, a power five type wide receiver. Uh, we just haven't seen him utilize that much. Uh, so he's another guy who we're watching out for here early in the season. Now let's flip it over to defense now. I was going to get your thoughts. I mean, it, just looking at the stats, it looks like teams have been able to throw it quite a bit on Georgia Southern. Uh, is that maybe a product of the secondary letting guys run open? Is it a, a lack of pass rush? Or what do you diagnose those those struggles in the passing game to? Well, I can tell you, I don't, I don't necessarily know if, if it's the lack of pass rush because our defensive line seems to be the strength right now. So they, they're able to get a lot of pressure. It seems like there's been a lot of broken coverages in the, in the secondary. And uh, talking with uh, Coach Lunsford earlier this week, uh, one of the things he, he, he started to question is, are we putting too much on these guys' plates? Are we asking them to do too much with their coverages and what they're doing? Uh, that, that there's some of these letdowns and breakdowns in the secondary. Uh, so he says going up to Arkansas, we're going to try to take a little bit of the pressure off, let these guys just go out there and play and see what that does. So, uh, again, I'm anxious to see if that is a situation because going into the season, uh, the defensive backfield, uh, it, it seemed to be one of the strengths going in. You had a guy like Derek Canteen who – uh, was one of the leaders in the country last year with interceptions. I uh, can tell you 
Uh, he won't be playing against Arkansas. He hit, he hurt his chest last week against FAU. So Derek Canteen, the most uh, veteran defensive back, uh, one of the more skilled guys there from his quarterback position, uh, he won't play. But what we did see last week is his backup, Tyler Bride, really stepped up and was all over the field. So uh, that's exciting. Daryl Baker Jr. at corner is, is another guy who has a lot of experience. He's one of those seniors who's who's really uh, turned into a, a good player back there. And Justin Birdsong at free safety is one of those other senior guys. So uh, you have uh, a lot of experience back there, uh, but there's just been breakdowns uh, here and there for those big plays. Uh, that's a, definitely an area of concern. Uh, don't get me wrong. That's something they want to solve. Uh, George Southern is just hoping that maybe it's just too much information being put on, too many responsibilities and maybe overthinking some of the coverage. So I think you're going to see it simplified a little bit against Arkansas and just kind of go out there and just play, not necessarily street ball, uh, but just you're going to start seeing just guys out there just man for man and, and small zones. I don't think you're going to see as many crisscrossing and, and you're going to see a more simplified defensive backfield against Arkansas. That makes sense. And you mentioned, you know, one of the, the strengths of the team seems to be that defensive line. Yeah. Is there a, a one guy that, that really is a, a good pass rusher that Arkansas needs to account for, or, or what, what's kind of the scouting report up, uh, scouting report up front? I'm going to tell you what, it all starts right there in the middle at, at nose guard. And, and, you know, he plays defensive tackle. He can play anywhere along the line and CJ, Wright. Uh, he's a senior and you're going to see a size and folks are going to be like, uh, okay, he's six foot. And, and that, and that may be, you know, with his boots on, you know, he's, He's a shorter guy, and, he, and he's right around 285 pounds, but that's 285 of solid muscle. Uh, the guy has a motor that never stops, and I've had, you know, power five SEC coaches tell me if this kid was two or three inches taller, he would be starting at the likes of Alabama, Auburn, or Georgia. He's that good of a player. Uh, he has a motor that never stops. In high school, he was a two-way. He was an all-state defensive lineman and an all-state running back here in Georgia. Uh, so he's an athlete, uh, and, and he's one of those guys, high motor, and kind of is the heartbeat there on the defensive front. Uh, and he's right there in the middle. Now, it's going to be interesting, uh, especially with how big that Arkansas offensive line is, is how this defensive line holds up. Uh, you know, against some of the, the more lean offensive lines, they're able to get that pressure. Now we're going to see, you know, those big bodies in that wear and tear. Uh, I can tell you this, that Georgia Southern has a, a, a good rotation going where they're getting around six to seven defensive linemen in there, and they're doing a good job of keeping them fresh. So, uh, you know, while we may not be the biggest defensive front, they are quick and they are athletic and they do like to hit. And it all starts with that C.J. Wright who plays with a chip on his shoulder. Maybe it's because he's a little undersized, uh, but he has been uh, the mainstay. Uh, Dylan Springer is, is a senior defensive end who, uh, you know, steps up and, and he, uh, you know, he's one of those upperclassmen who leads by example and, and necessarily isn't going to deliver the big hit or the big stop, but he's always going to be around the ball. Same to be said on the other end of the, the defensive line with Justin Ellis as another defensive end. This is a guy who transferred to Georgia Southern from Syracuse, uh, who, who uh, you know, a couple years back uh, was, was starting his career at Georgia Southern blows out, you know, his D uh, at LSU. So a guy who this year is finally back kind of 100%, and it's going to be fun to watch him. If there's one area that we need to keep an eye on, it is linebacker. Georgia Southern uh, losing a good bid, including uh, Todd Bradley Glenn. Uh, he's lost for the season with, with an elbow injury. He's done. He was one of those guys who was getting ready for his sixth year at Georgia Southern. Uh, and he got hurt during camp, so uh, he's no longer there. So the linebacking core still trying to feel themselves out, figure out who the leader is at that level. So if there was one area going into the season that Georgia Southern was concerned about, it was that linebacking core. Now we're two games in, and the concerns are coming from the, the defensive backfield. So, uh, again, I, I think, you know, as we've talked about with, with the coaches and the players, right now it's all about looking in the mirror and finding out who they are, and going after they're not satisfied with one and one they sure the heck aren't satisfied with going down to Boca Raton and getting beat 38 to 6 by uh, Florida Atlantic and they sure weren't happy with a five-point win against an FCS opponent so they're still finding themselves and, and you hope that it kind of clicks 
uh, you weren't expecting it and hoping it to click against now the nationally ranked Arkansas Razorbacks. Uh, but but then again, maybe it's a good time to start finding out what does work and what clicks because you can kind of you know let your hair down and, and let it rip because. Uh, let's be honest, outside of that, you know, football operations and that practice field, and uh, not many people are expecting Georgia Southern to, to, to compete in this game. So what perfect time to go out there and find your identity and find out about yourselves uh, and then one of the best in the SEC. Yeah, and that, that perfectly leads into to my, my last question for you. You don't necessarily need to make a, a score prediction or anything like that, but I know the the spread, the spread opened, I think, at 18. Uh, I think it's grown. Last I checked, like 23 and a half. Yeah. How do you see these two teams matching up in Fayetteville? What, what do you think kind of unfolds on Saturday? You know, it's one of those things because if, if Arkansas was what, you know, we knew of Arkansas in recent years, we would have felt a little confident. And there was actually a part of, you know, a section of the fan base who said, hey, this is a, this is a winnable game. If, if we're playing well, we could go there. Well, now you're going up there off of one of the biggest wins the program's had in a long time. You're nationally ranked. Everybody's here. You're going to have brand new goalposts. Uh, I'm sure there was a line of folks uh, ready to pay the $100,000 fine for the fan storming on the field. Uh, so uh, we're expecting a raucous uh, crowd. Uh, you know, I, I think your fans are going to be out. It's a great time for you guys. And again, congratulations for the success. I think, you know, when you have improved good teams, you know, from top to bottom in the SEC, it's good for all of college football. Uh, so, listen, Georgia Southern, 1-13 all-time against SEC teams. Uh, you know, what we have learned in recent years, outside of the LSU game a couple years ago when Joe Burrow led them to a national title, of course, that was the year we had to open with LSU, and we got roughed up pretty good. Uh, for the most part, though, when we have played uh, SEC teams, we, we've hung with them. You know, we'll, we'll exchange punches. I mean, for a lot of these guys, they were recruited by the same schools. And again, a couple inches here and there, maybe uh, just a, you know, a, a bench press or a second difference in this, and things could be different. Uh, with that said, I think Georgia Southern will go in there and, and punch them. Uh, and, and, you know, they're going to take the best shots. You're going to see a team that will quit. I can tell you that. You're not going to go in. And, this isn't your, uh, your, your run-of-the-mill cupcake. Uh, team in, in Georgia Southern. Uh, Georgia Southern expects to beat everybody they play. Uh, I do have concerns, though, while this team is still trying to find the identity here in 2021. Uh, I wish I was more firm. I do think the addition of Justin Tomlin is going to make that offense work a little bit better. I think having some other parts a little healthier and also that, you know, you know let's go in there like our hair's on fire with nothing to lose. I think Southern hangs. And uh, again, that spread, I mean, I, I thought, you know, if Southern plays their best game, there is a chance they win. Uh, I think they hang within that 20 points. I, I really do. I think I think from what I've seen, Southern uh, can hang with, 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 a, uh, with the likes of Arkansas. Now, can they this season hang with Alabama? No, I don't think there's a lot of teams in, our, in the SEC that can hang with Alabama. Uh, with that said, Arkansas is not Alabama yet, and we will say that. But what we've seen on film and what the coaches have studied – uh, you guys are fast, disciplined, and listen, knowing what Coach Pittman was up at Georgia, we know what kind of a guy he is and what kind of a coach. Again, we're excited for the success. We just hope that you guys don't have that success on Saturday. That's yeah, well, my that's different it. way of, of, of saying it. Yeah, and, and that, that's all I got for you, Frank. I, I really appreciate you taking the time to, to give us folks up here in Arkansas kind of a preview of the Eagles. Uh, I know everyone's really excited to – to get back in Razorback Stadium. I uh, hope you all have safe travels to Fayetteville. And as a reminder to those watching, you know, the game is at three o'clock central. Uh, it'll be televised on the SEC network. Uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you can get uh, more content like this, access to all the press conferences and practice videos, things like that. And as always, stay up to date with all things hogs by checking out hogbeat.com.